Today we're going to be talking about the living wall, pros and cons, and we're fixing to take it down. We'll explain that a little bit. Nothing to worry about. It might not even pertain to you. It's just us and, and what we're doing. So if you haven't been watching, the living wall is basically felt grow bags that we mounted up vertically and we're growing plants up it and, and it's working really well. Now, I don't know where you are in the world, but if you're in the United States, we're kind of going through a heat wave and it's hot and here in North Florida, we're hitting high 90s and sometimes during the heat of the day, out in the sun, it's over 120. So if your plants are in the sun, they're really getting cooked. Now with this living wall, we're still growing plants and it's doing really well. And basically the felt bags are just hung up on a vertical surface that we have. We had some a wood structure that was up. If you've been on a channel for a while, we had milk jugs up there and, and we use it for all kinds of things. And we're just ready to change it into something else. So the felt grow bags were hooked up. There was a reservoir, we put a pump, and it just pumped water into each row of pockets that were filled with hydrogen. Now when it got to the bottom, we had a gutter, went back to the reservoir, and just cycled over and over. Worked great, the wildlife loved it, the lizards were all over it, and even the bees were coming from around, and on the back I left it open. If you do yours up against the house, you're gonna need a waterproof membrane. Now ours was out in the open, I left the back open, and the bees were coming around, and it was pretty cool to watch them because they would try to find where the water was coming down like a little stream, and they would stop there and, and drink out of it and go back, I guess, and tell all the bees, and they were going back and forth, so very cool. The cat, we have a, a stray, he found out it was a cool place to sleep, and our, the top of our reservoir we used as a microgreen bed, and that was a pretty cool experiment. But once in a while we would come out and it'd be kind of squashed, and we figured out the cat found out that it was cool, and he was laying on it like a bed. So we weren't really crazy about using that for microgreen bed anymore because after the cat laid on it, we weren't going to eat any of that food. Now, I got this idea from Chuck at a channel called Together We Grow. And one reason why I'd, I'm not going to continue the experiments is because he's doing it over there. He's been doing it a lot longer, and he knows a lot more than I do about it. Uh, he's in Nevada, which is hotter than it is here. So if you guys are interested, you can check out his channel and continue the experiments with this. Now me, I'm taking mine down because, like I said, we're trying to get back to the basics. And that's what this channel was all about, was helping beginners and I wanted to do some other things. And over the past year, you guys have seen me go into permaculture and get rid of my downspouts and use glass containers. And uh, we're using wood for containers and just all kinds of things. And it was really fun. And I, I needed to do that just to show people that there's other ways you can do it. People are always coming on asking questions when I show them the basics. They're like, well, can't you do this and can't you do that? So we spent a year and we did a whole lot of different experiments and we lost some of our crowd because they just, you know, wanted one certain thing and we were doing a lot of different things and I understand that. But we're going to get back to the basics now and I have videos. So if somebody asks about plastic, we've got plastic free playlists that they can go look at. If they ask about permaculture, we're going to have things about permaculture that I'm still doing and, and that's kind of a long game. And that's why I haven't shared that much because there's lots of permaculture channels out there and you guys can go watch all those. You probably watch a lot. There's homesteaders. Um, the things I'm doing are experiments. So when I do it, I always get people saying, questioning what I do or arguing with me or saying you're wrong or you lied. And, and it's just gets tiring. So I do things different from everyone else. If I just did the same thing, I wouldn't need to make videos because there's no sense in 400 people having the same video, right? So I do things a little different and, and I have fun and, and I've done that all my life before YouTube or Facebook or any of the internet even came around. So uh, I'm still doing those on my own. I'm not going to be sharing very much of it. Like I said, it just gets tiring tr trying to explain yourself all the time. But we're still having fun with all of that. Now back to the living wall, the animals kind of took over. They, they love it. Mine, I put on a structure that was already set up that we were using. And my yard is full of shade. It gets hardly any sun, and depending on if it's summer or winter where the sun's tracking across, 
and during the summer right now it's coming up behind of that structure so the plants on the top get a lot of light and you'll see that those grow more and the ones on the bottom by the time the sun gets up far enough to cast any light on it then we've got the trees so from the the top row down barely gets any sun so that's where you get a problem is if i keep the water flowing good enough for the ones on top to keep them from drying out the ones on the bottom get too waterlogged and they never get a chance to dry out um, they also get shaded by the ones on the top grow big and they get even more shade so it's getting tougher and tougher for the ones on the bottom so if i was just growing microgreens putting them up there getting some baby greens which is what we we're doing and then harvesting those switching them out it works fine but for the way it's situated it's not working all that well for me and if i turn it i've got the newer one we turn sideways where it gets a little bit of the morning sun that one's doing a little bit better now another reason why we're taking it down too is because like i said we're getting back to the basics the the things we did for beginners and the more things that I add on and it's fun experiment and, and once you get going it's kind of hard to stop like we built that first living wall that was cool things were growing then we built another one and then my wife was talking about building another one and then I'm getting all these questions about it and and then we get away from the basics and a lot of people who are new to the channel will come in at that point and have tons of questions and all of this stuff is built upon like what I call a continuous harvest system is growing microgreens and then harvesting some of the microgreens eating those and taking some and, and growing them into baby greens and then taking some of those baby greens and growing them out and keeping the cycle going over and over again and that's what we were doing in the living wall and that's what we did in the downspouts so it's all part of a system and and I get people jumping in at the end and asking questions about it and they don't want to go back and learn the basics so I'm still focused on the basics getting beginners excited about it and uh, these are fun experiments that we did I've got videos I haven't put a whole lot of videos out but I got a ton of footage because I just filmed everything over the past year I just have hard drives full of stuff that I can go and make videos of so I just had to do that do the work grow the plants film it and now I've got stuff to show people if they have questions like I said if they are concerned about plastic I did some with glass containers and we did some with wood and, and I showed that it's possible and you can do it this living wall is uh, very cool because it's over 100 degrees out there and plants are still growing uh, the ones in the garden they're shriveling up we have to keep them watered all the time you're constantly irrigating my water bills going up but this one being in a closed system it doesn't use hardly any water and it's keeping everything hydrated so uh, very cool system so like I said nothing wrong with it it's just time for us to switch things out I'm going back to the basics trying to teach people uh, how to start microgreens how to do it in, in containers that they've already got um, just doing the basic stuff and then growing them into microgreens so we're going to go back to that and if you guys are already at the point where you know all of that then you know that's cool you you won half the battle now you know how to grow some of your own food and you can take it from there so how you've seen us do over the past year we we take that concept and then we keep adding on to it and adding on to it that's what everyone can do and a lot of you have already done it if you're in our facebook group there's a lot of people in there they're doing all kinds of things and and you know it all started from you know what our experiments that we started but then they branched out to figure things out on their own and and, and that's pretty much what i did all of this for and just watching it happen it is very cool so like i said the living wall nothing wrong with it it's just time for us to move on the other problem with it as far as i'm concerned I started using a crack key system, the off-grid hydroponics, uh, non-circulating, having them in containers where I could just put them up, set it, forget it, not worry about it too much. And then if something went kind of wrong in one container, I just switched that one out and you stay out other containers growing. With the living wall, all of that stuff it looks cool. There's this wall, uh, 40, 80 inches by 40 inches, just full of food. But with it being 100 degrees if the power goes off or the breaker trips or the pump goes out and I don't have a spare pump off hand it only takes a couple of hours and all of a sudden an entire crop is like gone 
and now that I've got two of them set up, my wife set up a little pond where we had our goldfish that were inside were getting too big. We turned the compost pile, uh, Mother Nature's Graveyard, that other video, we took that, emptied that out. We're going to use that as microbes and that to spread it throughout our soil, our barren kind of soil, and, and try to get things kick-started. And then we took that container and, and turned it into a pond, so we put the goldfish out there. That takes electricity and timers, and the living wall takes timers and electricity, and the other one does. And, and all of a sudden, we went from cheap and easy to watching different things and monitoring and having cords and, and tubes and irrigation and, and making sure things don't get clogged up. And, and if they do, you have to figure out how to fix them or how to unclog them and clean out pumps. And, and it's going to be a whole lot of work with it being over 100 degrees out there. And some of you don't mind doing that. Some of you are at home. You can be out there doing it. Some other people are on the road all the time like I used to be and they want something where they can just grow food and that's what I started out the channel want to help people do that kind of thing. So that's just another thing. So like I said, there's lots of pros and cons. It's nothing really bad. It's just time for us to go ahead, take it down, get things back to simple. I want to get the, the pumps all gone, get the wires out of there and just put my takeout trays back up and, and my small microgreen containers and just grow a lot of food really fast over and over and who knows we might put a couple downspouts back out or something but uh, we're going to find some things that work for people I'm going to put the milk jugs back out that was pretty cool everybody's got like milk jugs or orange juice containers or something right so we're going to get more into that grow food and learn how to do it and try to make it even easier and, and even more affordable because tough times ahead right so that about does it for today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed The Living Wall. If you want to watch anything about that further, go check out Chuck on Together We Grow. He's doing a fantastic job over there. And if you want to get back to the basics with me, we're going to get going on that and trying to spread our word throughout the world. And, and you guys have done that for the past seven years, and I'm really grateful about that and having loads and loads of fun doing it. All right. You guys get out there and lift and inspire. Keep on growing. Be the change. We'll catch you next time.